Attaining his ma'rifa and truly following his guidance will lead to the success and happiness of this world and the hereafter. But what is this ma'rifa? Is our standard of ma'rifa just knowing when the imam was born, where he was born, who his mother is and who his father is? Is that our standard of ma'rifa? If that's the case, then many non-Muslims have also got this level of ma'rifa, as they also know these facts about the imam. Therefore, it makes us realize that ma'rifa in its true reality, in its true essence, is something else. This very same question caused an individual by the name of Muhammad ibn Hakim to come to the Holy Sixth Imam and ask the imam, Ya ibn Rasulullah, al-ma'rifa tu min sun'i man here? This ma'rifa, whose work is this? Who's doing is this? The imam replied, min sun'i Allah. لَيْسَ لِلْعِبَادِ فِيهَا سُنْعَ It's the doing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The servants have no role in this. Therefore, it makes us realize that just as true knowledge, ilm huduri knowledge by presence, knowledge which an individual can taste, not just memorize, just as true knowledge is a light which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places into the heart of whom he pleases, ma'rifah of the imam of time is also a divine and celestial light which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places into the heart of whom he pleases. But this placing is proportionate to one's thirst for the Imam, to one's yearning for the Imam, to one's desire for closeness towards the Imam, which is synonymous to closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this desire and this yearning and this thirst to get closer, especially to the 12th Imam, can be seen from 1400 years ago. There are many, many examples to this, but one quick example, Sudair, one of the companions of the Holy Sixth Imam says that I with Abu Basir and Aban bin Taghlib and Mufaddal, we entered into the presence of the Holy Sixth Imam and we saw a strange scene. We saw that the Imam was seated on the floor with a Khaybari cloak over him and he was weeping and weeping as if a mother cries over her dead son. And he was saying one sentence. He was saying, Sayyidi, ghaybatuka nafaturqadi wa dayyaqat alayya mihadi. My master, referring to the 12th Imam, my master, your occultation, your ghaybah has taken away my night's sleep. I'm unable to sleep anymore. And it's taken away the tranquility from my heart. So Sudair says, we were shocked at this. We asked the Imam, Ya ibn Rasulullah, is everything okay? Has someone died? The Imam replies saying, no. I had just seen the book of Jafar, the book of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And in that book, I saw the period of the 12th Imam's occultation. And how confused and bewildered the mu'mineen will become during that time. And I was crying over that time. Yet an individual like myself who is living in the time of the 12th Imam, I'm heedless of my responsibilities and duties. Therefore, a person needs to work on themselves actively and not only when the 15th of Sha'ban is nearby. Often what happens when the 15th of Sha'ban is nearby, our attention and our tawajjuh towards the Imam of time increases slightly. And then all of a sudden it just dips. But my belief is this, that when the first of Muharram is nearby, our attention and our tawajjuh towards the Imam of time should increase by more than 10 times compared to, the, compared to any other days. Why? Because although there's a deep connection between every single member of the Ahlul Bayt, the connection between Abba Abdullah and Imam Zaman stands out exceptionally. There are many, many examples to this. Uh, but one quick example is this that is narrated that when the Imam is finally given the permission to reappear, he will stand by the Kaaba between the Rukun and the Maqam with his back facing the Kaaba and he will give out a call. Every single individual will hear this call in their own language without any medium. Now this is that individual who the Bible speaks about, the Qur'an speaks about. Every single Imam has spoken about him before. He himself has been awaiting for more than a thousand years. The whole universe is in a state of intidhar for him existentially. When he's finally given the permission to reappear, and now the opportunity to introduce himself, how does he introduce himself? He'll say according to the hadith, Allah ya ahl al-alam, inna jaddi al Hussein qutila atshana. O people of this world, my grandfather Hussein was killed whilst he was thirsty. Allah ya ahl al-alam, inna jaddi al Hussein sahakuhu udwana. O people of this world, my grandfather Hussein was overwhelmed with animosity. He introduces himself through Aba Abdullah. Why? Because Abba Abdullah is the perfect example, the perfect role model for any individual who wishes to bring about divine justice. There are many, many more examples, but because of, because of time, we can't discuss every single one of them.
But one of them which will link it to the practical aspect of our discussion is this, that the companions of both Imams are extremely great and devoted in terms of ma'rifa, love, obedience, worship, truthfulness, sincerity, bravery, istiqamat, steadfastness. In actual fact, the companions of Abu Abdullah on the day of Ashur are the teachers of the companions of Imam Zaman during the period of the Duhur. The companions of Abu Abdullah reached the Imam despite the most difficult of circumstances, routes which were full of surveillance. Do you think it was easy for Habib ibn Malahi to exit Kufa in that time and reach Abu Abdullah in Karbala? It wasn't easy. Similarly, the companions of Imam Zaman also find themselves in the presence of the Imam, spiritually and sometimes, sometimes even physically. A person comes to Ayatollah Abdul Karim Kashmiri, rahmatullahi, one of the great students of Sayyid Ali Qadi, a great mystic, a great Arif, and he asks him, Agha, can the, can the followers of the Imam meet him during the period of Ghaybat al-Kubra? Ayatollah Abdul Karim Kashmiri was known for his short answers, his silence. He looked at him and he said, yes. If they become spiritually pure and clean, yes, the Imam is spiritually pure and clean. You become spiritually pure and clean and the capacity itself will be generated. And when the questioner asked for some practical things, he said, recite Ziyarat Ala Yaseen often and do tawassul with the Imam. And every single day, have some time of solitude with the Imam, khalwa with the Imam. A degree of wilaya will be found. But our ulama also teach us that the important thing is this, that the Imam sees us. Not that we see the Imam. There were many people who saw the Prophet of God physically during his lifetime. But was the end good? Not necessarily. Therefore, it's important to realize and understand that the Imam has a mosque in the heart of every single Shia. The question arises, the million dollar question is this. Have I allowed the trees of materialistic attachments to grow to such an extent that this mosque of the Imam which is in my heart has become veiled, concealed and buried in this forest that I've created with my own hands? That's the big question. Allahumma.